Hi everybody! In the last episode, we talked about the perceptron and how we can use it to make binary decisions. We had a set of inputs on which we had applied a set of weights, and if the added results were bigger than the threshold of 0.5, then our perceptron returned true. Otherwise, it returned false. But what if the output of our perceptron is different from the output we wanted to get? We wanted to get true, but our perceptron returned false instead. So first, we will need to make a distinction between the desired output, also known as target or Y, and the actual output, also known as prediction or Y hat. Yes, Y with a hat. And while the desired output, our target, is attached to our set of inputs and cannot be modified, because a chicken is always a chicken. There is no reason why we should call it a goat. Suddenly, our actual output can and should be modified up until the point that it's a perfect match to our target. And it must be a match across all input entries. So if a certain input has a target of 1, while our prediction returned 0, we will need to use something called an error function to adjust our perceptron accordingly. An error function is often called loss function or cost, and it helps us determine exactly how far we are from our target. So if we are on the way to Vancouver, but we take a wrong turn and get to Squamish instead, the error function will tell us the distance between Squamish, our current location, and Vancouver, our desired location. And while there are many, many different kinds of error functions, in this tutorial we will focus on cross-entropy loss, also known as log loss. And because they have such fancy names, before we're diving into the formula, let's look at an example. So let's say our input data consists of four entries. Each of these entries would have three features and one target. If the target is one, then the prediction of our model also must be 1. Otherwise, it must be 0. Now let's see if the actual output matches the target. So when we multiply the first set of inputs by their corresponding weights, we get 0.26 as the weighted sum. Now, because 0.26 is smaller than our threshold of 0.5, our perceptron will return false or 0, which is unfortunately different from our target of 1. On the other hand, the weighted sum of our second entry is 0.2, which is also smaller than 0.5, so it also returns 0. But this time, 0 is a perfect match with our target, so our model classifies the second set of features properly. And then in the last two entries, we get 0.48 and 0.3, which is also smaller than our threshold and therefore will be predicted as 0. And now, when our data is organized, we can move on with calculating the cross-entropy loss. So for a single entry, or a single set of features, the cross-entropy loss formula looks like this, where y represents the target and w sum represents the weighted sum. When we fill in the values of our first set of features, we get the negation of 1 times log 0.26 plus 0 times log 0.74. And since multiplying by 0 cancels the second part of our equation, we only get minus log 0.26. And if you check on your calculator, that equals 0.58. And if we do the same for our second input entry, we get the negation of 0 times log 0.2 plus 1 times log 0.8. And since this time, multiplying by 0 cancels the first part of our equation, we get minus log 0.8, which equals to 0 0.09. Check it in your calculator. Now, when we take a closer look at the results of these entries, we can see that cross-entropy loss gives a much bigger penalty to inputs that have been incorrectly classified by our perceptron, since 0.58 is much bigger than 0.09. So whenever the prediction is a perfect match with the target, our error value will be very, very low. 
otherwise it will be much higher. Another detail you may have noticed is whenever our target is 1, only the first part of our equation is being executed, while whenever our target is 0, we only execute the second part, which is really, really cool. And after we're done calculating the loss of each individual input entry, we can move on with calculating the total loss. So first we add all the individual loss values and then we divide them by the number of entries, which in our case is 4. We get 0.285 as a result, which represents the error term of our model or the distance between the actual output and its target. In statistics, we call this operation mean, but us simple folks, we call it average. And therefore, the cross entropy formula for all our entries combined looks like this where y still represents the target, i represents each of our entries one at a time. It is very similar to an iteration variable in a for loop, and n represents the total number of entries. And it's all rainbows and butterflies when we go over the concept. But how do we implement it with code? For this, we will start a brand new file, and we will begin by importing the math module. Next, we will recreate some of the data we've used in our example. Now, since in the last episode, I already showed you guys how to calculate the weighted sum based off the inputs and the weights, we will not repeat this in that video. Instead, we will focus on the two only variables required by the cross entropy formula. So we will create a brand new variable called input data, which will equal to a list of tuples. And the first value of our tuple would be the weighted sum, the calculated weighted sum. And the second value would be the target. And I will quickly fill in the rest of our entries. And once we defined our input data, we can move on with defining our cross entropy function. For this, we will type def cross entropy. And inside the round brackets, we will specify a single parameter, which is our input data. And then we will set our initial loss to zero, just so we can increment it with each data entry. Additionally, we will define our n variable, which equals the length of our input data. And now we can focus on the weighted sum versus the target. And since we have four different data entries, we will need to tackle this with a for loop. So for entry in input data, the weighted sum equals entry in the index of zero, which is the first value of our tuple. And then right below, we will define our target y to be equal to entry in the index of one, which is the second value of our tuple. And now we got to the fun part where we implement the cross entropy loss formula. So if you guys remember, our formula was negative of y times maths.log10, which represents logarithm in the base of 10, and the logarithm we're looking for would be the w sum. By the way, base 10 means decimal. And then the second part of our equation would be plus 1 minus y times maths.log10, but this time we're looking for 1 minus w sum. And since we would like to increment the loss value, each time we encounter a new data entry, we will set this expression to loss plus equals the expression. And once we're done accumulating the individual loss values, we can exit the for loop and we will return the loss divided by the number of entries represented by n, also equal to the length of our input data. And then once we have defined the function, we can go ahead and call it. So in the very next line of code, we will type error term, which equals to cross entropy, which takes in a single argument called input data. And then we can print it. And just for the sake of the demonstration, I will also print the individual loss value. So we will copy this expression and we will print it in a line below. And once we are ready, we can go ahead and run this script. 
And here we see some very familiar numbers. So you probably remember the 0.58 from our first data entry. You remember the 0.09 from our second data entry. And then, of course, the error term of our model, which is 0.28. Good job. Cool. So let me know in the comments below if you have any questions regarding cross entropy loss. I know it's not an easy concept to understand, especially if you're not a big fan of math, but things that are challenging are very often very rewarding when you finally understand them. So don't forget, I'm here to help and definitely let me know if you need help. And even though I always recommend you guys to code along with me, just so that the information sinks in a little better, you can still access this code by clicking on the Wayscript link in the description of the video. You can, of course, clone this code and you can enjoy it without typing. Cool. So in this episode, we learned how to calculate loss and how to get the error term of our model. In the next episode, I will show you how to update the weights of our model according to the error term. Yes, we are finally getting to gradient descent, which is probably one of my most favorite parts. 